Nahum, and Habakkuk. 28. Nineveh's Fall But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water. Yet they shall flee away, stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Nahum 2, eight. The prophet here anticipates a doubt which might have weakened confidence in his words, for Nineveh not only flourished in power, but it had also confirmed its strength during a long course of time, and antiquity not only adds to the strength of kingdoms, but secures authority to them. Accordingly, as the imperial city of Nineveh was ancient, it might even seem to have been perpetual. Why, Nineveh has ever ruled and possessed the sovereign power in all the East, can it be now shaken, or can its strength be now suddenly subverted? For where there is no beginning, we cannot believe that there will be any end. The Ninevites no doubt boasted that they had been eternal, and as they were fixed in this conceit concerning their antiquity, no one thought they could ever fail. This circumstance shall not, however, prevent God from now overturning its dominion. How much soever then Nineveh took pride in the notion of its ancientness, it was yet God's purpose to destroy it. From this passage we ought to learn that no trust is to be put in the number of men, nor in the defences and strongholds of cities, nor in ancientness, for when men excel in power God will hence take occasion to destroy them, inasmuch as pride is almost always connected with strength. Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that as Thou constantly remindest us in Thy word, and has taught us by so many examples that there is nothing permanent in this world, but that the things which seem the firmest tend to ruin, and instantly fall and of themselves vanish away, when by thy breath thou shakest that strength in which men trust. O grant that we, being really subdued and humbled, may not rely on earthly things, but raise up our hearts and our thoughts to heaven, and there fix the anchor of our hope and may all our thoughts abide there, until at length, when thou hast led us through our course on earth, we shall be gathered into that celestial kingdom, which has been obtained for us by the blood of thine only begotten Son. Amen. 29. The Watchtower I will stand upon my watch, and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Habakkuk 2.1 the prophet, finding himself sinking and, as it were, overwhelmed in the deepest abyss, raises himself up above the judgment and reason of men, and comes nearer to God, that he might see from on high the things which take place on earth, and not judge according to the understanding of his own flesh, but by the light of the Holy Spirit. For the tower of which he speaks is patience arising from hope. If we contend with Satan according to our own view of things, he will a hundred times overwhelm us, and we can never be able to resist him. Let us therefore know that here is shown us the right way of fighting with him. When our minds are agitated with unbelief, when things are so confused in this world as to involve us in darkness, so that no light appears, we must bid adieu to our own reason, for all our thoughts are worth nothing when we seek according to our own reason to form a judgment. Consequently, until the faithful ascend to their tower and stand in their citadel, of which the prophet here speaks, their temptations will drive them here and there, and sink them, as it were, in a bottomless gulf. The tower is the recess of the mind, but how can we ascend to it, even by following the word of the Lord? Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that as Thou seest us labour under so much weakness, yea, with our minds so blinded that our faith falters at the smallest perplexities, and almost fails altogether. O grant that by the power of thy Spirit we may be raised up above this world, and learn more and more to renounce our own counsels, and so to come to thee, that we may stand fixed in our watchtower, ever hoping through thy power, for whatever thou hast promised us, though thou shouldst not immediately make it manifest to us that thou hast faithfully spoken, and may we thus give full proof of our faith and patience, and proceed in the course of our warfare, until at length we ascend above all watch-towers into that blessed rest, where we shall no more watch with an attentive mind, but see face to face in thine image, whatever can be wished, and whatever is needful for our perfect happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 30. Punishment for Avarice Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his! How long! And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay! Habakkuk 2.6 All the people who had been collected, as it were, into a heap, 
would take up a parable or taunt in order to scoff at the king of Babylon. What seems here to be the singing of triumph before the victory is no matter of wonder, for our faith, as it is well known, depends not on the judgment of the flesh, nor regards what is openly evident, but is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. As then the firmness of faith is the same, though what it apprehends is remote, and as faith ceaseth not to see things hidden, for through the mirror of God's word it ascends above heaven and earth, and penetrates into the spiritual kingdom of God, as faith then possesses a view so distant, it is not to be wondered that the prophet here boldly triumphs over the Babylonians, and now describes a derisive song for all nations. The prophet also intimates that tyrants and their cruelty cannot be endured without great weariness and sorrow. Hence almost the whole world sound forth these words, how long? And this feeling, is it not implanted in us by the Lord? But let us in the meantime see that no one of us should have to say the same thing to himself which he brings forward against others. Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that as thou deignest so far to condescend as to sustain the care of this life, and to supply us with whatever is needful for our pilgrimage, O grant that we may learn also to rely on thee, and so trust to thy blessing, as to abstain not only from all plunder and all other evil deeds, but also from every unlawful coveting, and to continue in thy fear, and so to learn also to bear our poverty on the earth, that, being content with those spiritual riches which thou offerest to us in thy gospel, and of which thou makest us now partakers, we may ever cheerfully aspire after that fullness of all blessings which we shall enjoy, when at length we shall reach the celestial kingdom, and be perfectly united to thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. 31. Chariots of Salvation Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea, that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Habakkuk 3.8 A question has much more force when it refers to what is in no way doubtful. What? Can God be angry with rivers? Who can imagine God to be so unreasonable as to disturb the sea and to change the nature of things when a certain order has been established by his own command? Why should he dry the sea unless he had something in view, even the deliverance of his church? Unless he intended to save his people from extreme danger by stretching forth his hand to the Israelites when they thought themselves utterly lost? He therefore denies that when God dried the Red Sea, and when he stopped the flowing of the Jordan, he had put forth his power against the sea or against the river, as though he were angry with them. The design of God, says the prophet, was quite another, for God rode on his horses, that is, he intended to show that all the elements were under his command, and that for the salvation of his people. That God, then, might be the redeemer of his church, he constrained the Jordan to turn back its course. He constrained the Red Sea to make a passage for his miserable captives, who would otherwise have been exposed, as it were, to slaughter. Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that as thou hast so often and in such various ways testified formerly how much care and solicitude thou hast for the salvation of all those who may rely and call on thee, O grant that we also at this day may experience the same, and though thy face is justly hid from us, may we yet never hesitate to flee to thee, since thou hast made a covenant through thy Son, which is founded in thine infinite mercy. Grant then that we, being humbled in true penitence, may so surrender ourselves to thy Son, that we may be led to thee, and find thee no less a father to us than to the faithful of old, as thou everywhere testifiest to us in thy word, until at length, being freed from all troubles and dangers, we come to that blessed rest which thine only Son has purchased for us by his own blood. Amen. 32. Rejoicing in the Lord Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labour of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. The prophet teaches us what advantage it is to the faithful seasonably to submit to God, and to entertain serious fear when he threatens them, and when he summons them to judgment and he shows that though they might perish a hundred times, they would yet not perish, for the Lord would ever supply them with occasions of joy, and would also cherish this joy within, so as to enable them to rise above all their adversities. 
though the land was threatened with famine, and though no food would be supplied to them, they would yet be able always to rejoice in the God of their salvation, for they knew him to be their father, though for a time he severely chastised them. Our joy shall not depend on outward prosperity, for though the Lord may afflict us in an extreme degree, there will yet always be some consolations to sustain our minds, that they may not succumb under evil so grievous, for we are fully persuaded that our salvation is in God's hand, and that he is its faithful guardian. We shall therefore rest quietly, yea, though God fulminated from heaven, we shall yet be in a tranquil state of mind, looking for his gratuitous salvation. Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that as we cease not daily to provoke thy wrath against us, and as the hardness and obstinacy of our flesh is so great that it is necessary for us to be in various ways afflicted, O grant that we may patiently bear thy chastisements, and under a deep feeling of sorrow flee to thy mercy, and may we in the meantime persevere in the hope of that mercy which thou hast promised, and which has once for all been exhibited towards us in Christ, so that we may not depend on the earthly blessings of this perishable life, but relying on thy word may proceed in the course of our calling until we shall at length be gathered into that blessed rest which is laid up for us in heaven through christ alone our lord amen <laughs>